Investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Hello, everyone. Basil Chapman on this Wednesday, the 24th of August. Uh, we're looking at the uh, TLT, which is the iShares Treasury, Treasury Bond Yield, uh, Treasury Bond ETF, uh, down uh, 49 cents at 111.55. So I've been, been doing this for some time now, uh, just been practicing it. It's just a whole, I, I've been doing, you know, charting for uh, since the late 1970s, right? Hand charted, then went to computers, etc. Um so I'm I'm always evolving, and it doesn't matter what age you get to, as far as I'm concerned, um, and certainly one of the reasons why I, I wouldn't want to retire is that I need to keep the mind active, and to keep the mind active, uh, you know I've got my CD introducing a CD book introducing the Chapman methodology. It was done in 2005. Must have sold a couple of thousand of those, um, but it kind of ran its course only in that the technique, the medium that I used was a CD. And now, of course, computers hardly ever have CDs. You can get them very inexpensively, maybe 20, 30 bucks. Um, but basically, I haven't renewed uh, printing the uh, CDs, although I keep getting requests. I just, I'm thinking about maybe making, a, if it's possible, and I'm still able to do it, make, make a bunch and then that'll be it. Um, and I, I don't have the time or the patience to put into a book. And uh, someone reminded me this morning that many of the techniques that I've been, actually pretty much all the techniques that I still use today that I from that CD in 2005, there are some refinements. And those refinements are very simple refinements for very uh, important refinements. Um, like if the low is retouched from the starting point, as long as it's not taken out by one penny, that buy signal or the peak A or whatever it is remains intact. In that case, I, in the beginning, I said we have to start, count it as a restart. So that's changed. It hasn't changed all that much, but it's changed. There are a couple of things. And of course, all the moving averages, I, I did discuss some in the, in the CD, but now I use them. They are uh, pretty much a very essential part of what I do. But there's also the left side, right side price time match, and that bar symmetry is what I, I my a lot of it of my webinar all day webinar Wednesday what was that at the beginning of July, um, that is that's focused a lot on it. So what I had here was, and this is what I've begun doing. It's nothing new. What is new is that I've started to add the actual date or the time and price. That is my expectation based on the Chapman Wave methodology. And in this case, this was done, oh, maybe two two weeks ago. I put down 110.87 by the 23rd of August. Well, the 23rd of August came and went, and the low was 111.74. And today, so far, the low is 111.48. So we're just a tad above it. But that's a nice technique. And I did not, I used... The peak D, I did not use the peak E, which was the actual top. So there's a, there are a bunch of other things. When visually, it doesn't look like you can do it based on the number of bars that have been already been made from the one side to the other. Uh, then you have to use something else. Then you have to use artistic license, but really it's not artistic license. There are particular bars that I look at. And that's something else I've discussed. So that's at least uh, something. What would happen next is that if that was taken out, then I would have to find a new plumb line. That's the, the, the line that says the number of bars on the left, the bar symmetry on the left, needs to match that particular new bar symmetry on the right. All right, so we've almost got there. Most importantly, if you're looking at the TNX.X, that is the 10-year yield, we're in leg E. We've gone above the left side high that was made back on the 8th of uh, July at 31.01, .01, that's 3.101. And uh, what we're looking at, we're trading right now with a high of 31.04. And where was the symmetry there? This symmetry, look at this. Going from that high to the exact low. 
and then to the right. It's funny how you think that the inversion, the mirror image, should be an exact mirror image. It's funny how many times it doesn't quite work that way. Therefore, you have to use each each one has its own complexity. And there you are. Let's see where that goes. I think I know exactly where it goes. Look at this. Boom. Tomorrow it should hit uh, 3101. By tomorrow it should hit, should hit 3101. But it's a day early because it just hit 3104. Is that another, a fabulous uh, technique? Then, of course, you've got to know how to put the Chapman wave inside wedge target resistance line. Well, that goes right there. Boom, it hit beautifully. So these are the techniques that I like to use. I'm just going to draw this in right now because this is the first set of parameters that have actually been met. Okay, so the yields are going higher, but they're only anywhere near the 34, uh, 3480. What was this in 34? 34.83 high of the 14th of June. So uh, yields are still going higher. And I did this a long time ago to show you that within the context of history, we've been here before. See that trend line that I drew, that horizontal bar, back in July, June, July, the whole of 2000, uh, late, no, 2008 and 2009 to 2010, 2011, June, July. Is that 2011? Let me just check. That should be 2009, right? There's a, oh, yeah, it's a monthly chart. Absolutely. Look at that. The 200 period moving average was hit a number of times and then it went down. Now, all of a sudden, what are we looking at? We're looking at it working its way. That would be your target line right there. 37.08 in the 10 year. Uh, this is the 10 year Treasury note interest rate target in the monthly chart uh, of that in the 35, 35 area. Good. Okay. With that said, let's move on. Let's now do what we needed to do right away. Let's do, oh, come on, hello. Whoops. Uh, am I doing something wrong? No, everything's cool. Okay, there we go. All right, here we go. Dow is up 1.90. Dow's up 1.90 at uh, 32,901. You see this 200 period moving average? It was resistance, then it broke out. We gapped above it, and now we've come back to the 200 period moving average of 32,199 as a fulcrum, as a, as, a, as, a, as a magnet area. The further away we go, if we go to the 50 uh, period moving average of 32,500, further away we go, the greater the difficulty in getting back there because it's a repellent zone. But the more we hang around close to it, the greater the chances are that 32,200 is going to be a magnet. And uh, so let me just give you a big picture for what we're doing. We're still long uh, the diamonds. We're along the diamonds uh, from 2020 in April at 210.99. We've taken a little bit off. We've kept a core position. We're along the uh, the shorter term. We're along. We actually got the very bottom, but we got in and got out. We got in and got out. And now the last entry was at 3 and 50 of July. We got 30,600. And we've got it all the way. And we've taken a little bit off. Uh, about a 9% gain so far is the best we've done. But we also put the DOG uh, a couple of days ago as something um, to ameliorate some of the down. I'll be back and we can go through here. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. 
Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, so well, let me just continue with that. And I just, I had a question in the YouTube, Tiger YouTube. Yes, this is a peak app. Remember, I have a relationship of an F alternate count slash, this case would have been a slash C, because this little A right here on the uh, August the 3rd, I think it was, let me just check, August the, yep, August the 3rd, um, must be counted as a peak. And this is not an instant restart. This would have been a down arrow, an up arrow with a brand new buy, and it would have had to go to F slash C, then a G slash D, that would have been a D. But you had the two candles, the Chapman Wave Roman candle, uh, sorry, Chapman Wave, um, and this is the silent doji candle, the following session on the 17th, and then another doji candle, tiny little one, and that's it. Oh, be careful if you close decisively below both these lows, that's a that's a big negative. But now we're underneath the 200-period uh, the, uh, moving average. This is now the third session. We're under, doesn't matter where we close, we're under it right now. That's number one. And number two is the MACD cross negative stochastic went sharply to the 43% area. On balance volume pulled back. And we haven't crossed negative on the nine period over under the 14. I'm going to talk about that right now. But because we took out uh, the gap up over the 200 period moving average, that said to me, there's, you cannot call, consider that a peak C. It's an F. And if you go to the S&P, you'll see that we have exactly the same thing. Yeah, the S&P, two doji candles, breakdown from the 43.25, 28 high of the 16th. So it's a sell signal. Haven't got to a sell mode yet if we cross negative in the 9 under the 14. But now I'm anticipating, but let me just do the same thing here. Your QQQs had a G slash uh, C, if you remember. Uh, but I said, oh, doji candle, all of this pretends a pullback. And yes, we've got a G. If you look at the IWM, the Russell 2000, Doji candle at the high on the, uh, that was the same day, 16th, or was that later? That was the 16th at 201.99, peak F. I haven't put the down candle, the, the down candle yet because of the way it's handled the uh, move under the 200 period moving average. Even today, this is two days in a row so far, it hasn't taken out the low of the um, 22nd, I think it was. What was that date? Uh, yeah, the 22nd of 190.01 and even today the low is 
uh, what is that? 0.16. So that's a good sign. So, uh, and a couple of things. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll get back to what we were talking about. I hope that helps you. And then uh, Pat says, uh, breaking U.S. home prices fell 0.77 percent from June to July, representing the first monthly decline in five in three years. Month over month decline 0.77 was also the largest decline since January of 2011. Hey, have a look at this. This is uh, the HGX. Um, I didn't finish that, huh? So that would have been just continuing the notation here, E, F, and then an unusual red G, just like we saw in the uh, QQQs. So the daily chart has gone to a sell signal, very close to a sell mode because it only barely went above the 200 period moving average for five sessions, and then it, since then it's been much lower. But it is a fabulous leg A, in the weekly chart, and the nine has just crossed over the 14. So that says there is some support in the Philadelphia housing sector index, and it's only made the peak B no matter how I counted the peak B in the monthly chart. So all I can say is that I'm trying to stick with my rules as much as possible, and uh, it's when you consider how bad actually all the, if you look at all the verbiage about um, housing over the last two weeks, it's actually the last six weeks, but especially over the last two weeks, especially over the last week, just to go from 423s, 425, down to the low today of 393, and having a big green rebound of five and four. This is why I'm saying that, I mean, I had a call from, from a really good friend for a long time, actually, he was my he, he was in one of my master classes back when we were doing them down in Florida. Uh, this was an all day one live. Uh, this was level two. Yeah, level two because he had already been watching me for a while. So he knew some of my the techniques. So he skipped level one. And um, I consider him to be one of the best Elliott Wave anal analysts that I've ever, ever, ever known. Personally, that is. Um, actually, I, I shouldn't say that, but in the spectrum of everything that I've read. So I sent him what Larry showed the other day that I think Jeff you you just had shown in his in, in Larry's show. I just sent the sent it to him just to peruse. That's just the uh, where, where, where did I put it? Here it is. It's the preferred Elliott wave count. And he said, oh, yeah, he, he agrees with that. And it's just uh, he, he's he been thinking that the major top he had called the major top uh, back in January. Um, and this is he's a, he's a layman. He's not uh, uh, this is not what he does for a living. Although he certainly could do it for a living, he's done it for almost all his life. Made a living from it, as he says, he's made more of a better living from it than his actual profession. But he's been retired since he was 50, and he's now about 85, 86. Um, so he, he went through this, and I said, you know, Bob, I. I agree with you on all those other things that you're saying. And he went through, and he is in the, in the uh, building. Uh, he was an architect and builder. His sons now do do that. And I, I agree with you, but there are other aspects in my big code of phase. I don't see how this could be a major phase, major top when you've got the brokerage uh, co companies uh, that still need to be on fire. They're not on fire. You, you, I, well, they got some of them got burnt, but they're not on fire on the, on the positive side. And I went through a litany of what I'm looking at for the big picture to say, I don't think this is the major top. But I, I, I don't want to do this now. I'll do this on Technical Friday if I remember. I'll talk about the, the, how the turn of the century, as you go in the 20 years into the turn of the century, starts all new technology. Every, I mean, some of the 1600s you've got there. It can go even back further to the Gutenberg printing. Um, but it, it, what's really important is that as you get to the first 20 years of the next century, you basically have formulated a whole panoply of of um, sectors that are going to become mature over the next 40 to 50 years until the next 20 year uh, period before and that for us would be 2080. Um, so this is a period where this is the maturity of it but then in the 2030s I'm expecting that's where we get some kind of major top, but it comes from excessivity like we've never seen. It's just the whole world is trading American stocks and, and going crazy with it. Who knows what it'll be? Maybe it'll be the electric vehicles. I don't know what it'll be. 
but it was some hysteria, tulip mania. I don't think we've even got close to that. The nervousness now is palpable. I mean, every every adult that I, every, every senior that I talk to, um, I, without even mentioning, not even knowing what I do, just rolls their eyes and says, I, I, I'm, I've lightened up. I, I can't take this. This is, and I know what they can't take because it's been a fantastic rally since June. So let me just go through this uh, in, in terms of actual price price points. So that just says that the, the housing sector has had a big pullback. But when you think that it came from, oh, why did I type that in? From 175, I think you have 175.41 back in March of 2000. 75.41, let's call it 75, 175 to 538. 175 to 538 in the Philadelphia housing sector index. But we did a beautiful double top. You know these things, I talk about them all the time. That's what we spend time on. And I did my webinar, you can do the webinar. It's the, it wasn't the time limit thing. It was the techniques that are viable, they'll be viable for the next 10, 15, 20 years. Look at that, measure that move to that. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, well, so let's just get back to our story here. So uh, someone, uh, um, one of I said, uh, Amazon, Amazon, these gaps are going to become much more important as we move forward. Um you know, look, here's Amazon. Yes, there's a gap, an island reversal, pretty close to an island reversal by pennies. Below 136.21 on the on the 9th, and then ran up to the 140s, peak D, and then it pulled back, and a beautiful left side, right side price time sequence. So 130, uh, 136.21, what was the high three days ago? 136.32. So that's technically not, let me just double check. 32. That's not an item reversal. It cannot fill the gap at all. So that's one. But I've got plenty. I mean, SPX.X. 
No, nope, the S and P didn't. Almost did it, but it didn't. Uh, I, I had I had them written down a whole bunch. Microsoft was it? Microsoft, Microsoft. Yep, there's an item in reverse that I drew there. Microsoft PG with a sign in Joji the next day pulls back from the uh, two, two, uh, what was it 298, 294.18 high of the 15th, trading now 276, uh, almost at the uh, 50 period exponential moving average. Uh, to me, yes, it's important. I can tell you how many times I've seen gaps, item reversals. There are some that stay forever, um, especially when you make lows like on the 6th of March of 2009 uh, in the Dow, the S&P on the, on the 9th. Uh, remember, we went long the day that, of the 6th. So, um, yes, it's important. It's not the end all. There are so many other factors. It's just about to cross negative in the MACD. The MACD is negative. The 9 is just about to go under the 14. But a lot of work has been done. It's been six, ses seven sessions of downward action. We might get this flip to negative with the uh, going pink in the nine period moving average, just as that magnet of the 200 period moving average pulls it back. Okay, so this is what I wanted to say. I knew I almost forgot, I would forget it, and I didn't. There we go. I'm anticipating that we are really close based on many of the factors that I look at. One is the 120 minute chart. This is, there's a lot going on that we've made just a very near-term basing that says we could rally. And let's just say by Monday, instead of crying crying foul because we're now below 32,400, 32,500 is really important, but they're really, I've, I've drawn it in here for subscribers to my newsletter, the opening call, um, right here. Left side, right side price time match says that before um, the 30th of, of August, that's uh, next week, early next week, the 32,387 level might have to be tested. It doesn't have to because what I'm thinking here is that, look, the, the um, we've got a trough G, a leg G in the 120-minute chart. The stochastic's flat is 7.11. That's not so great. It needs to get above 12% to say, wow, we can re retest the 33,000 level. Uh, but there are signs the histograms improving a little bit in the MACD. There are just signs that says, you know what, if we don't plummet because whatever happens at Jackson Hole, instead of going into the hole and seeing everything plummet, uh, we are holding quite nicely. There could be a bounce. And then I think it's the dreaded H pattern that I have to look at. And that I'm going to draw it in here just so that we know I'm talking about a potential for a, a move like this, it could still go a little lower, but a move like this. And then somewhere, you know, I'm always talking about two fighting patterns. Somewhere over there, we get this particular pattern that says, uh-oh, we started to stall. And kind of in that, not even 33,500, but just above 33,000, maybe we stall and we make an H pattern. I'm just saying this is a possibility. We could actually spend some time. We could spend three to six sessions trying to get above the 200 period moving average, but the magnet of the 200 period moving average says you can go above, but you're coming back to 32,200 no matter what. So I'm just thinking that we, we're making some kind of a near term. That's the reason why for subscribers, we went long a couple of ind indexes. I started a position, small position, but we started a position. And uh, mostly because we have three times long on one of them, and we have, we're out of the three times long another, but I like... The fact that everybody is so, I mean, here I have uh, uh, email says, uh, puts on Intel, puts on advanced micro devices, puts on uh, salesforce.com. Whoa, puts on, there was another, I think it was applied material, was it? Or NVIDIA, uh, puts on the TLT, ooh, ooh, ooh. FXI, oh, this is a busy person, but I, I and they might just be relaying me what other, you know, what the consensus is out there. So I'm just saying, you know what? Look, Applied Material, a fantastic company, got beaten down from the 167 area area of January of this year, plummets down to just over 80. Now it's bounced, it's got over 110, it's trading at 101. It's the dreaded H pattern, and this pattern usually says. You could, in fact, the best case is that it could go into a rectangle formation like that, have another bounce, but stay in the rectangle formation. The worst case is it decisively takes out that left side low of the eighth of NVIDIA trading at 101.62, down 33 cents, the low of the 9th of August of 97.88. But 
even a rally, uh, just a bounce in something as good as this or advanced micro device, a little di bit different chart because it went, this did the dreaded H and did the one to one to the downside. I should put a down arrow right there from the high that was made just above the 200 period moving average. But even this could have a little bit of a bounce from the 92 area to maybe 95, 97. And that would stall. You see, I'm the most important thing now is I want to stall a cascade to the downside. As long as we use time for the consolidation, that's really important. All right, could I go on with? Yes, I'll go on with this. Let's look at crude oil. Crude oil was higher much early, earlier at 95.40, so I'm 93.41. And this is fascinating. Uh, someone said, do you mind doing what you looked at the other day? Uh, yeah, okay, so CF is not quite in the same area. This is CF Industries. Hydrogen, nitrogen products for clean energy, fertilizer, emissions abatement. We've been long since the 95s today. Did 111.73. This is the Chapman Wave stalk leg body neck formation. But it's already started to look like it's it, it's closer to the one to one to the upside, which is already cheap from the last leg. Um, so there's a whole connotation there. I'll get into it once today, Wednesday. Maybe by Friday we'll have pulled back and we've, we might have double top. 113.59 is basically my my target area. Um, and if it goes to 113.60, that monthly chart is going to G stash C. Almost certain that I have to call it C, but we'll see what happens with the C. And the other one, so also oh NFE. NFE is new. Fortress Energy Inc., a natural gas fuel solutions. Nice move up uh, at 60.87. We're in from the 45s. Uh, we're taking little bits of both CF and this one. Whoops, uh, get out of that. Wants me to update, not today. Um, and we've got a potential doji candle right here in the weekly at a peak D. Uh, this should struggle a little bit more. It's had a fantastic move. It most probably needs to go sideways. So sideways is important because you want to use time rather than price. If this suddenly... We have a caller. We have a caller. Thank you very much. My engineers just said we got Charlie in Framingham. Charlie, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you, Basil? I'm very well. Good to hear from you. Good to be calling. It's been a while. Um, I picked up FCEL uh, yesterday at 401. We got a nice little pop today. Good uh, price action. Um, what are your thoughts on this? So this is one that's always Please. on my list because it's in the fuel cell business, uh, electric service company, natural gas and biogas. Um, so I like this a ton. It's, it's very difficult to trade it. And you just did exactly that. So and we, I believe we've got, a, yeah, we've got a break coming up. Yeah, we've got a break coming up. Charlie, I'm, I'd love to get back to you. So hold on because this is, I, co I consider this is in play but you also have to learn how to take profits. So we'll talk about that as soon as I get back. Folks, we're looking at FCEL, trading at 4.30, up 32 cents. The Dow's up 11, S&P's up 6. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for Dave's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold. Traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Back and we're looking, let me just change this. We're looking at JO for the moment, the weekly chart that is uh, coffee. That's like a, a type of trust of coffee futures. Let me just go back. We're looking at fuel cell for Charlie in Framingham. Charlie, I was in Framingham, I couldn't believe it three times in the last week. But uh, we'll see what happens here with fuel cell. So, this is what I wanted to say to you if you look at the chart, these big moves, once it starts the big move. If there is a follow through for two, for the two out of the following three sessions, it makes higher highs. It says that the move can actually last even longer than just a bounce. So when you said uh, you're looking for for a, a, a rally, um, I, I'm not sure what your position is right now. If you've taken something off or whether you've kept it, what, what, what what's your thinking? Um, what I did is I got a I got a thousand shares and I put in a sale for $5.15 for half of it, and I was going to let the other half kind of ride. So why did you That's choose 515? Pardon me? Why did you choose? Yeah. Yeah, why did why? you choose 515? <laughs> because um, that's like that's like a $500 gain on oh, okay. a that's great because $4,000 investment. Absolutely. I, that's fantastic. Good. I, I just needed to know the reasoning because I'm looking at this and I'll just show the people, the viewers at, at TFNN, Tiger, Tiger TV. Look at this. It made a peak F at the 200 period exponential moving average back in March of the 11th of March of this year, 20, uh, 2022. It was at uh, $7.33. It pulled back. It had a retest on the 200 period moving average. Couldn't make a new high. It failed made that dreaded H pattern, try to hold, and then plummeted down, and it went from uh, the $7, $7 range to the $2.80, was it? Yeah, $2.87 low on the 12th of May. Then it went to peak ABCD, pull back, doji candle, makes a higher low, goes peak A, peak B, struggles, makes an H pattern, comes back in the left side, right side price time match, and then it has a big move within two days. It goes from the three, uh, 318 area to 407. I mean, percentage-wise, I mean, that's big. And then it pulls back. But look at it, it pulls back to the 340s, and then it screams up to the last high of $5.50. Uh, $5 that was on the 15th. So now it's done another one of these big pullbacks. The 9 is just about to go negative, but it hasn't yet. The MACD is negative. The stochastic is way down 29. So what I would do, I don't want to change your thinking. I'm just going to add a couple of points. Number one is, I don't know what the reason is for the big move. We don't have to know. It's a big move. And so far, instead of just being a single pop going into the 945, 950 time frame, and then by 10.05, it's given most of it back. This is holding. I mean, 436 is the high. 435 is the high. It's at 433. 
something serious is going on, at least for the day so far. If this, by what you really want to see now, is the candle of the 19th, which had, of, of August, which had a high of 449 and a low of 422, you want to see it getting close to the top part of that, and then it will be back above the 9 and 14 period moving averages. And then if it pulls back any time between now and Monday, and it hasn't closed under 427, 425, something in that area, um, but instead is making higher highs, then I think you've timed it just beautifully. We can't say whether it's going to go all the way to the 200-period uh, moving average, which is now at 510. But I just wanted to mention the history says it, it pops up over the 200-period moving average, pulls back sharply, and then goes back and then fails to make a new high. Let's see, because that'll fit exactly what you're talking about. It'll get to the 510 area. I'm just going to make one suggestion that if it gets close to the 490, instead of waiting for five, uh, 515 to take everything off, why don't you scale it out of one little position as it's getting into that 480 area going towards your goal? Just so that, because that's kind of where it normally, I'd normally expect it to fail if it can get there. But most importantly, it needs to try to touch 450 by Friday afternoon, Monday, Monday this time. So great entry. Really, I congratulate you on your entry. And now you have to let now it's up to the price. You've done your job. Now fuel cell energy has to follow uh, the plan. So let's Thank see you. if it even if it Basil, heard the plan. Can, can, I, can I bring up another point that I'm sure. not sure has validity? Um, if, when I look at short interest, I use Fidelity, and it has short interest or short percentage is what the designation is. And it says 15.90%, and that oh. has a date of, like, July 29th. Um, does, is that potentially um, a mover for this? You know, the person the who does a lot of work with the short interest is Dave White. So why, why don't you if, you, if you have a chance, why don't you give Dave a call, ask him that exact question. He'll be able to give you a much more lucid answer. My only answer to that is the short covering has been a pertinent feature for many of the rallies. But when you think that it was down in the threes, and it went to 550. It's more than a short covering. There were buyers there. My suspicion is that if it holds into the 450 area by Friday or Monday, then mm -hmm. you're going to get the same thing right now. Because as it went into the last three candles, the people were shorting at 450. Must have thought, great, this is it. It's going back down to the threes. So they kind of shocked. So first is the shock. They don't do anything much about it. But if tomorrow it follows through, it should be a strong candle because if their short covering is a factor, it's gonna it's gonna add the add fuel to the fire. So that's really what Got you it. want to see. But you also want to see buyers, real buyers, come in, and those buyers will come in if it fills the gap about 450. And the best it can do on the downsides is go to 447, and then go to 463. That'll be fantastic action. So that's the scenario. I don't want to draw it in just now other than to say my, my eye says I would first of all say there are two fighting patterns. And my uh, eye says that the resistance in the 450s for the H pattern, you know, the pattern I call the dreaded H, that's where you've got your greatest risk of some kind of a pullback. But I think you did. You, I mean, if you if you got in yesterday and you saw this happening today, one of two th reactions should have been. First of all, to just grab a little bit off to say, wow, that was great. Just for, for money management, just take a little bit off just to show, to prove to yourself that you can do it and you've done it right. And just as a compliment and then let the rest go the way the way uh, you've been planning and let's see what happens. But I, I love the fact that it's, it's holding just tight at the 9 and 14 period moving averages after this big bounce, holding beautifully right now. Um, let's see what happens by the end of the day. If it can close at the high of the day, I think you've got the short squeeze going as well as new buyers. I hope that helps you. It has. Thank you, as always. Take Thank care. Thank you very much for calling. I appreciate it. So, uh, folks, a couple of things I want to look at here. I wrote it down. I don't want to uh, run out of time for that. I wrote it over there. So let's go to that. Um, 
Yeah, so let's just do this. So the questions have come in about, say, the FXI. I haven't updated it, but FXI made a lower low today. Big green candle at 29.68. This is the China, uh, this is the a large cap fund. Um, it just, I can see it balancing here, but I think it's stuck in a range. I think most of the Chinese stocks are stuck in a range. Just I wouldn't be messing with them. Yeah, big candles in Baba as well. So there could be a bit of a balance. Dow's up 22. I'll be back. Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. But instead of doing anything else uh, in this very final segment, let me just show you something here. This is what we worked on I, I, in my other uh, of my webinars. Um, there, this is a Chapman Wave Falling Axe Formation. And all you can do is the homework, and then you have to wait to see if it actually pans out. So what we're looking at here is, uh, where did that go? There it is. Uh, one, two, three. Yeah. So this is a pattern that I've discussed many times. Prices rise, 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 and they start to fall. You make lower highs and much lower lows, and you find support. And then if it takes out the declining line, trend line, and goes above the falling X formation, uh, declining cone, uh, de 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 declining trend line and goes into the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone and then becomes a propellant zone. You can see, a one, make it simple. You've got a declining expanding cone. It goes from a low, takes out the upper trend line. You can have a one-to-one -to, -one to the upside, maybe even going towards the left side high. Well, the way I look at it is this. 
Oops, where did that go? I did, took the wrong, wrong thing. So this is the five-minute chart, and it's gone. There's the falling axe formation. This is the expansion. I was very conservative. I didn't go to the trough, the obvious trough, and that says one-to-one. -one. We've already done that, exceeded a little bit. Now what you need to see, you've got a peak C, and it's above the previous peak D by just a, a 50 cents or something like this. This is the five-minute E-mini. Well, now you want to see strength over the next, you know, our rule of 136. Well, we're already at a bar six. So it's like you have to get a brand new trigger for a buy signal to be able to take it to a leg and brand new leg D about 40, 41, 43, 50. And my time frame would say that by uh, 11, 20, by about 11.30, uh, sometime in Steve's show that's coming up right now, you want to see a price above that. I think that would be really good action, especially for the five minute chart. And key support now is at 41, uh, 41.32 to 41.28. Hey, have a wonderful day. Stay tuned for Steve Rose. Check out my opening call. I had some new positions today. I don't know if they'll work out, but that's what we're looking at. Have a wonderful rest of the day.